South of the border lies the most exotic land in the Western Hemisphere. Utterly foreign in feeling and atmosphere, Mexico spreads out like a colorful tapestry of plateau and mountain, jungle and desert, with only fragmentary evidence available today to prove that here flourished the first civilizations on the American continent. Here, the charm of centuries lingers over dignified cities and picturesque towns where many of the primitive customs still prevail. In every native village throughout the land, the public laundry troughs are kept busy from sunrise to dusk. Customs sometimes suggest the Orient. The street barber, for example, is a strange sight to Western eyes. This typical country road with its creaking ox cart might well be in India. This ancient land, though so close geographically to the United States, offers customs and crafts more foreign, more exotic, pagan and primitive than anything in Europe. The tiny village of Tonala produces most of the Indian crafts, such as wood carving, that so impressed the first white men to visit this land. It is noted also for one of the oldest and most widely known of all the crafts, the making of pottery. All the characteristics of Aztec art have endured to this day in the pottery of Mexico, some of it unchanged, some modified by the Spanish influence. Here is an industry known to ancient China and perhaps brought into the Western Hemisphere by nomads migrating from Asia by way of the Bering Straits 20,000 years ago. The rope making of today probably has not changed in all these centuries. The inevitable market on the plaza holds every sort of offering for household and personal needs. There's always a fiesta someplace in Mexico, and that means colorful costumes, enormous sombreros, pounds of silver on saddles and bridles. Lovely senoritas ride in from outlying ranches, senoritas with raven hair and flashing eyes. And, of course, gallant caballeros are everywhere. There's always a rodeo, Mexican style, with the usual riding and roping stunts. Experts with a lariat that challenge those of any land. But the chief event is a bull throwing contest in which the idea is to grab his tail and upset him. Apparently not so easy, but here's the time either the tail lets go or down goes El Toro. Every little village is built around a church, of which there are thousands. But because the priests are few in number and services infrequent, the wayside shrine is almost never without its supplicants, who will not pass without a moment of devotion. Here in the vicinity of Hanizio, an island on Lake Pazcuaro, ancient Indian fishing methods are still seen. A church not far away contains the famous painting, Descent from the Cross, attributed to Titian. On this plateau, mighty civilizations flourished, conquered and vanished, leaving their titanic landmarks no less amazing and even more mysterious than the pyramids of Egypt. This temple was built to mammoth scale with extraordinary carvings of the plumed serpent, sacred to the pagan god of the Aztecs, and miraculously unimpaired in the passing of unrecorded centuries. The picture writings have never been deciphered. High on the summit of a pyramid is the church of the Virgin of Los Remedios. 
Mexico City, capital of the Republic, is one of the largest and most modern cities in Latin America. Brooding over the city to the east rises the mighty cone of Popocatepetl, the mountain of smoke, an active volcano over 17,000 feet in height. Here, modern Mexico has added graceful adaptations of the 20th century's contributions. The great cathedral, said to be a second in size only to St. Peter's in Rome, occupies the site of a pagan temple of the Aztecs. Its construction began in the 16th century, and not until 300 years later were the towers finally completed. The President's Palace stands where stood the palaces of Montezuma, last of the Aztec emperors, and Cortes his conqueror, first of the invaders from the outside world. A monument to Montezuma depicts his torture by Cortes to learn the secret hiding places of treasure. Charles IV of Spain was the man on horseback in his day, and like so many of the mighty, he remains on horseback only in bronze. Mexico City is the only place in the Western Hemisphere where prehistoric, 16th century, and modern civilizations are intermingled. The magnificent Palace of Arts, with its famous glass curtain, offers alternating seasons of opera, symphonic concerts, ballets, and dramatic attractions. The ever-present winged serpent of the Aztecs adorns the tower. Of course, the bullfights in Mexico City's great Plaza de Toros are the most popular attraction, at least for the Mexicans, who flock to the spectacle with the enthusiasm of baseball fans. The bull is encouraged to develop a grouch and a distaste for picadors and matadors, for which no one blames him. Floating gardens of Joximilico, constructed long before the conquest and often described as Mexico's Venice, are a few miles away from the city. Among the incredibly beautiful gardens, profuse with every known flower, glide adorned canoes, propelled by sturdy Indian villagers who to this day speak the ancient Aztec tongue. They explain that their ancient people piled earth on rafts to grow flowers on the bosom of the lake and how the rafts eventually became fixed to the bottom. of soft music fills the air as silent figures move along an ancient Spanish road that well may lead to mystery and romance of forgotten centuries. Adios, Mexico. And Mexico replies, Adios. Hasta la vista. <laughs>